Before we can really start to work with CoilCAD, we need to be clear about certain concepts that are basic to computer-aided design, CAD design, such as vectors, coordinate input, and selection methods. If you are already experienced with CAD software, then skip this chapter and move on to the next one. The first concept we're going to look at is the concept of vector entities. CAD drawings consist of entities. These can be lines, circles, polygons, arcs, text dimensions and so on. And these you create and manipulate by inputting commands in the command window and also specifying coordinates. All CAD software works with vector entities. And by vectors we mean entities which are defined by their geometric properties. And although it may seem curious at first, you're never actually drawing these entities themselves. Instead, you are specifying features of the entity and CoilCAD is drawing them. So, for instance, as we've already seen, when I wish to draw a line, I'm specifying the starting point and the end point. And once those have been defined, CoilCAD is going to fill in the line segment between these two points. Looking at the example of a line entity, we spoke about the starting and end points. A similar technique applies, of course, to other entities. CoilCAD will only draw an entity after you have specified the exact geometric features. Let's look at this using the example of drawing a circle. I'm going to begin by typing the command circle and hitting enter in my command window. I now have to make a decision whether I want to draw a three-point, or I have the option to draw a three-point circle, two-point, etc., or I can just specify the center point. And I'm going to do this by clicking on the page where I want the center of my circle to be. So this is the first coordinate that has been set for this particular entity. I'm now being asked by the command window, by a prompt, to specify the radius. And let's type in 30, and I'm going to hit Enter. And if I'm happy with this, I can just leave my circle as we now have it and selecting this entity as I go over to my property bar I can see the properties of this circle I have a radius of 30 so that gives me of course a diameter of 60 and I have the exact x and y coordinates of the center point and here I have other things that I could change uh, line style line color etc but I've now defined the basic properties of the circle Let's now create a two-point circle. A two-point circle is basically a circle where we are defining the diameter. So I'm just going to type in circle here, hit enter, and as we can see here in the command prompts, I can choose three point, two point, etc, etc. In this case, I'm going to choose a two-point circle. So I'm just going to type in the underlined letters here, and this is 2P, and enter. So, and the prompt is now saying, specify the diameter starting point. So I'm just going to click here, and I get a further point asking me to specify the diameter end point. So I'm moving across from one end of the diameter to, to the other. So I'm going to click here, and I've now created a two-point circle. If I select my entity, and I wish to change the diameter, for example, instead of 111, I would like this to be 120. I can enter the value here, hit enter, and I've now changed the properties for the diameter. Let's continue by drawing a couple of more entities. Here we have an example of an arc. Uh, an arc is drawn by indicating the two endpoints and one other point, and this other point could be the radius, it could be the center point, and although it looks simple enough, of all the entities you could draw in a CAD program, arcs have just about the largest numbers of options available in the command window. So let's draw an arc. I'm going to type in the arc command and hit enter, and now I can specify the starting point, specify the through points and specify the end point. So I'm just going to move this around until I have the arc the way I want it. 
hit enter and I now have my arc. Let's draw another arc and I'm just going to specify another through point and specify again a new end point. And here you can see I'm snapping to the midpoint of my previous arc. I click and I hit enter and I've drawn my second arc. Up until now I've been using command prompts in the command window to create our vector entities and at the same time define specific geometric properties or the way that we created the entities. But we can of course use our drawing tools to create the entities themselves. So I've just chosen the ellipse tool and all I'm going to do is drag along here determine basically the long axis of my ellipse and using this now I can just adjust the size of my ellipse. This of course isn't very precise. In the command window we can actually put precise measurements in. But by selecting the entity I can of course define the minor radius. So let's just change that. Let's put this in as 50. And the major radius which is the long radius. Let's define this as 140. Of course you have other properties here that you could define. But you can also create your vector entities using the drawing tools and then defining their final properties in the property palette.